Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we are talking about this book. So this is The Witching Hour by Silver Ravenwolf. Spells, powders, formulas, and witchy techniques that work. So apparently Silver had taken a number of years off and this was her like comeback book. So that was interesting. Didn't know she had taken a major break, but apparently she did. And this was like her coming back book. This was published back in 2017. So overall, this book is a nice refreshing breath of air for those of us who are trying to read a lot of the witchy books that are published, but it gets a little old to always have the Wicca and Witchcraft 101. This isn't that book. She does have a baseline of like you should probably know some stuff like she assumes at this point you've read either her books or other books and you don't need to be an expert by any means but this is not holding your hand explaining every little detail anymore which is so nice some of the reviews said that it felt very just kind of random and like the sections didn't really blend together that well I didn't notice that being too much of an issue. Some of the chapters and like the stuff she put in it was a little weird, but overall it's just like, yeah, once you're advanced, it's not gonna flow seamlessly together in one major thing. Like it's kind of just like a hodgepodge of stuff. And for what the book is, I think it's fine, but some people really didn't love that. She covers a variety of topics in here. Fluid condensers, which this chapter really, I didn't love. I've never heard of fluid condensers before. And I kept being like, it's not an essential oil, right? Like it seems different than an essential oil. I didn't love this chapter and she does reference it much later on in like all of the like spell-ish things to do. Of like make this fluid condenser and I'm like, what is this? Don't think I've heard any other book talk about it. <laughs> so that was different. And it's like, is this supposed to be like a tincture? And honestly, I just didn't care <laughs> to try and figure it out because like I reread it and reread it and I was like, I don't know. But yeah, fluid condensers, apparently that's a thing. Then we have Silver's Magical Secrets and she talked about making beeswax candles, which was like really intriguing. I do want to try that because I do want to get into making candles. I don't know when that's going to happen. I'm thinking it's going to be like Yule into in bulk time and blessing them around in bulk. I'm just, I'm feeling like that's what's going to happen because that's what my brain always puts it as. So we'll see if that happens. She does also talk a lot. I don't, don't remember if it was in this section in particular, but she has a lot on astrology and angels and that's not my jam. I'm not huge on astrology. It's like kind of cool if you want to include it, but like for the most part, I'm just like, ah, it's the, you know, zodiac of like where we're at, you know, like not getting into the houses and go, oh my God, it gets so complicated real fast. <laughs> like I'm more of just like, oh, we're in the season of Leo right now. And like a little bit of like the moon is in like a different sign, but even still, it's not my favorite. I'm leaning more towards like days of the week magic opposed to like, what are the planets doing? Cause I, it doesn't really affect my day to day life. What day of the week it is does. Cause that's kind of how our culture revolves. So it makes more sense for me to be like, oh, it's Saturday. Saturday's good for banishings. It also has planetary things assigned to it, but it's like, oh, well, this is a good day to do bills, banishing debts, get rid of that stuff on a Saturday, you know? So like for me, it makes sense to do it that way, but yeah, there's a lot, lot, lot on astrology and angels anytime I just immediately skip because I don't care. Never going to. Not my thing. Cool if that works for you. Definitely does not work for me. Another thing she talks about is the use of graveyard dirt. Now, for some people, this is kind of a gray area in the craft. She does talk a little bit of like giving a little bit of a warning of like, hey, like kind of be careful. Like you don't know who you're taking like dirt from. But like for me, and my practice and everyone I know, that's like super disrespectful. I would not want some teen witch going up to my dead loved one's graves and getting like a coffee pot full of dirt from their grave, which is like, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Just don't do that. Get graveyard dirt, but not from a grave. That's not somebody you know or you're related to. It's a thing. I just don't love it. I don't love using graveyard dirt anyways. Like if I'm going to, it's mostly like more ancestral work and it's going to be from my dead people. <laughs> like we have a lot, we have quite a few options and they walked all kinds of different lives. And so like, it's fine 
to go to them and ask for help, but like, random strangers? Like she says, to do that, to go to your loved ones and family and friends, but then it also was like, but if you need like protection, go find a soldier's grave. And I'm like, A. <laughs> and she does tell this, but it's like, I feel like that's still bordering on illegal. Cause like, there's a lot of like sheriffs and cops and like people who worked all different branches of military and army and navy and all of the stuff that like, yeah, you could take from them, but like, I don't know if I would want that to be like my defining thing when I'm dead. <laughs> like it was a job that they did. I don't know. I just, I struggle. And like, also we all know people are corrupt. So even if they were a soldier or they were a cop or they were a judge or whatever, and you go to their grave and steal their dirt, like you don't know if they were actually a good person just because they worked a job doesn't mean they were a good person. Doesn't mean they're going to offer you protection. They could have been an abusive asshole. <laughs> like. Pick people you know, and if you don't know any dead people, I mean, unfortunately, like, you will. It's gonna happen. Either you die or they die. Like, that's how life happens. But, like, I'm sure there's plenty of, like, dead people that would be fine, <laughs> that you would be able to go to, but I just... And the idea of taking, like, an actual, like, little, like, the gardening shovel and taking that much dirt is, like, dude, <laughs> you don't need that much. If at all. A and she literally said, don't take a spoon. A spoon's not good enough. And I'm like, it's plenty. How much dirt are you taking from here? I'm not a huge fan on taking graveyard dirt from people that you don't know, especially like going to a specific grave. Because like, if anything, just go to like, not the specific graves. There is plenty of space between dead people that you could take graveyard dirt and not get the specific person, you know? Like go to the entrance. They're not gonna put a body like right at the entrance typically. Like, you could go there, get some dirt, or like along the road, you know? And it's really easy to get, but you don't need a lot. I don't know. It's one of those things that it's like, I know not everyone agrees with me on that, and that's fine, but yeah, I'm just like, I don't, I, like, I would be highly offended if somebody went to my mother in law's grave and took a bunch of dirt off of her grave. Like, I'd be very offended and be very pissed at the cemetery for letting that happen. Because it's like, it's not your place, it's not your person. Back off. Same with, like, my grandparents and a cousin that I'm now getting married to the family, so now kind of my cousin. And, like, grandparents and stuff, it's like, you know, we don't need to. We really don't. Like, just stop, you know? So, I don't know. She talked about it and has a lot of recipes and different things to do with dirt. But I'm like, I feel like it should be like so specific of a situation. And maybe we'll talk about like when I would use graveyard dirt, like maybe around like Samhain, like, I don't know. If you want me to talk about it, let me know in the comments. But like, yeah, that section, didn't love it. And throughout this book, she references constantly her tradition, which I am not from the East Coast. So there was a lot of, you should know this stuff and you should know about this thing and I don't, like Pennsylvania Dutch and Pennsylvania Dutch powwows. And I don't know how to say the word, but her tradition has kind of changed its name more recently to start with like a B, which I, I don't know <laughs> how to pronounce it. So I'm gonna just spell it for you. It's B-R-A-U-C-H-E-R-E-I. So it's, I don't know, or powwow, Pennsylvania Dutch system of traditional folk medicine. It's on page five. She kind of starts talking about it. At least that's where I flip to to find the word. But yeah, she talks about that a lot and it's like cool, but like also 100% I don't think that's out here. Utah's a long way from Pennsylvania and like when we think of powwows, we think of the tribes that still live here and the like cowboy edition of Rent Fair basically. Like I'm sure the tribes do things kind of on their own and don't really tell like everybody. But like there are a number of get-togethers that happen and people just dress up <laughs> and they dress up in old school cowboy outfits and old school like pioneer outfits and like the old west and a lot of tribes will dress up as well and they have all of their stuff and it's really fun to go to like i love all of their stuff their jewelry because they usually have shops and stuff so you have 
jewelry and food and it's like a big to do. It's usually a huge weekend a couple times in the summer. And so it's like, that's the only stuff we really get. And I, again, I'm pretty sure that the tribes actually do powwows, like legitimate ones. And I don't even think they're called powwows out here. I just, my brain has short circuited and I cannot remember what it's called. <laughs> Again, it's like the cowboy ren fair, basically, of like, we're gonna go back to like the 1800s and do stuff. And we used to go when I was a kid, and it was fun, because they always have like a gem fair kind of thing inside, and they have a bunch of rocks. I was a witch long before I knew it was a witch, because I was like, oh my god, I need all of the things. And lo and behold, I needed all of the things. But yeah, so anyways, overall, this book isn't bad. It's definitely not aimed at beginners. <laughs> It's really more for the advanced reader, and if you're wanting just to get like some different ideas, again, moving into the advanced where you're getting really specific and like if you want to complicate your craft, has a lot to do if you want to do that. Because it literally even tells you like how to like code like a verbiage for a spell. It was like anytime a letter repeats you like cut it out, and then eventually you're just left with a set of letters, and then you like have those letters assigned to numbers and then you add all of those numbers up doing the numerology thing until you end up with one number at the end and then that number is like the thing you use for your spell. It was really complicated that I was like I would never but like dude if I wanted to make it complicated that's a great way to complicate my craft and that's not a bad thing like I complicate mine in different ways and some people want theirs very simple and that's cool and if you want it complicated that's a great option. So anyways, I would love to hear your thoughts on this book in the comments down below. Do make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I do post every single day, and I do have a Patreon if you want to support me over there, patreon.com slash nightwillowcrafts. And until next time, thank you so much for watching, and bless be.